Now, volume, you can actually bring this down. This actually gives you a little bit more headroom to help bring in the new peaks, everything new that it's creating. Because remember, what this is doing is it's going through and taking a squared off wave and it's rounding it out. It's creating the signal in the area um, that is no longer there. So if we do this offline, you'll actually be able to see what it's doing. Right now we're using it in real time. You can see it right here on the object editor we have it going. So let's remove this. Close the object editor. Let's open this up in destructive mode. We're going to take this one. Let's, give it, let's find a low signal one. Oh yeah, there's some nice distortion. Ah, it was wonderful. Okay, so let's go back to restoration, declipper. We're in offline mode at this point. Um, let's bring this to basically the same settings we had before. Um, just because we know they were working. Hit play. Cool. Now, we're going to bring down the volume of this. And when we hit OK, what happened to the signal was it actually went from squaring off everything through this area to actually being allowing allowing the voltage, you could say, to flow naturally where it would. So let's do this to a bigger area, and you'll be able to see exactly what's going on here. Restoration declipper. It's on it. Hit OK. And if you notice, now this whole area looks like normal wave. And is 100 times cleaner. Really, the only noise I'm hearing right now is the actual fret noise um, from the bass, uh, fret buzzing going on. So there you go. That's D-Clipper. Let's move back into our project now. I have a, an old file that I found that... Um, might be a little bit hard to hear on this demonstration video, but go please and try this on stuff. Load a, load a song off of a cassette or an old recording that you, you've done way back when where there was hiss and noise. Um, let's go through and we'll do this one in real time also. We're going to add restoration dehisser. And all of these restoration plugins kind of run on the same theory, on the same way of working. So as we hit play, the amount of absorption we can change from none, we can start bringing it up, and the amount of reduction. And again, the amount of reduction, I don't want to really do more than about 6 or 8 dB. Um, the style of music, since this really isn't pop, it's more of acoustic type thing, or orchestral sounds a little better for me. So, let's hit the inverse. Let's make sure we're not making our music disappear, so we'll bring that down a little bit. And that's it. You hit bypass and hear the original. Just a real light hiss is there when you hit bypass, otherwise it's gone. And that's it. It's really straightforward. Um, obviously there's some other things you can mess around with, being able to read out the different readings and stuff when you hit scale options. Uh, but let's close that for now and let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next one is a song actually off of one of my first albums that I ever did. We actually lifted the noise off of um, an old LP that I had, which was the original Beatles' Hard Day's Night. And um, so obviously it's it had been a while. It's, it's been sitting around for a long time. So it was the noisiest record I could find in my collection. And it sounds like this. And then, obviously, my song came in over the top of it with a noise. So let's take this area. We're going to do this again in real time. You can do this offline also in Samplitude Pro or Sequoia. Um, Sequoia actually comes with a full restoration suite already built in, so you could do it either way. Um, with the restoration suite, we are running in real time. And the first one that we're going to open and make sure it's on, hit edit, is the declicker. Okay, so let's select just this front area, which sounds like this right now. And you can see the clicks being drawn on the screen. So over here in the declicker area, we're going to bring up the sensitivity. Now we're going to bring up the mix of, remember, how much original versus how much of the uh, changed, affected uh, sound. So hit playback. 
and you can see how much of their gain reduction is happening. And you can also see right here the actual clicks that are being taken out, being um, marked in with the red. So let's take a listen again. Now let's inverse it. Let's hit bypass and then back in again. So that got rid of the bad clicks. Let's let the song keep playing. Let's hit bypass and listen to that. So <laughs> big differences. Okay, now, so the remaining stuff that's happening in this, let's move over to the D crackle, which is more of a small sensitive type of a, of a thing. Um, so here we go. Let's inverse it to see what it's doing. So it's just taking care of some of the weird little um, extra artifacts that are happening in there. So we're going to leave it like that. And let's go to the actual where the song comes in. Let's bypass it. Bring it back in. And there you go. Works really good. Now, the only thing that's left in this is a little bit of hiss noise. Because um, remember, the declicker and decrackler takes out the big clicks and pops and then the small little bit of crackle that's going on. So we have that happening first. Now in the object editor, let's turn on the dehisser. Hit edit. Let's put these both on screen for the same time. Now, got that first area. Let's find some of an absorption level that's about at the noise. As you can see, the blue line comes up. Let's reduce it about 8 dB. Ah, we're getting a little bit of a watery noise. Let's bring it back to 4. Let's inverse it. OK. Now, find my timeline again. Let's get to where the song starts. I can bring it up a little bit because the song's not affected. Now let's bypass both. Bring them back both in. So having these both work together is great on this. Um, the dehisser, really you just want to make sure that it's just pulling out the noise and that you're keeping far away from the actual um, stuff that you want because otherwise you'll get the watery effect and like I said reduction only 6 dB at the or 8 dB at the most as soon as you start hearing any artifacts any watery kind of kind of sound that's when you want to bring it back down try not to hit it too much as soon as you do audio is wasted and gone um, so that's it any questions please give me a holler email me or uh, give me a call and I hope you enjoyed this and hopefully this has helped you out and and, uh, but go play around with these plugins. I think you'll, they'll make a big difference uh, in your workflow. That's it from here. And uh, take care. Talk to you soon. Now go make some music. See ya.